Today we're going to be talking about one of the forgotten reversing manoeuvres that used to be taught before the driving test was changed. Now before you go clicking away and looking for another video, the reason why I'm doing this video is because it has huge benefits for the current manoeuvres that are on the driving test, but it's been forgotten. And I would pretty much guarantee this, that the majority of people don't teach it anymore and it's not the turn of the road. If you are interested in the turn of the road maneuver, then obviously hit me in the comments and I will do one of those videos soon. But today we're going to be looking at the reverse around the corner. Now, why is the reverse around the corner so beneficial to the other maneuvers that are still on the driving test? Well, it's not really going to massively benefit the pull up on the right and reverse, but the Bay Park, reverse Bay Park and the reverse parallel park, it can really complement. If you think about if you're reversing back to a corner and then you're having to do a 90 degree turn around that corner, that's very similar to a reverse Bay Park. When it comes to the correction, now when you're reversing into the road, you had to, back in the day, reverse 10 meters into the junction. That 10 meters, we used to teach how to steer to bring the car closer to the curb. Well, that's only going to benefit you when it comes to the parallel park. One of the biggest problems that people face when they're doing reversing is understanding the steering. It becomes a stumbling block. It becomes a problem that if you can solve steering, then it should have a massive impact on the rest of your reversing. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you today how you use reverse around the corner like it used to be taught for the driving test. But when you're doing it in real life, you wouldn't necessarily have to reverse 10 meters into the junction. Reversing 10 meters into the junction means you're no longer close to the mouth of the junction, causing an obstruction to anybody else. So it does kind of make sense that you move away from the junction when you're doing it. But if you're just turning the car around, but if you're just turning the car around, I'm glad I mentioned that because that's exactly what this maneuver is for. Just in case you wanted to know why you would learn this reversing maneuver. You probably would just reverse into the junction and if it's safe, come to a stop and then move off and turn the car around. There's also one very important point. When performing a reverse around a corner, you can reverse from a major road into a minor, but not from a minor into a major. That would be dangerous. So I'm gonna get into position here. Now this is the corner I'm gonna use. I don't wanna to be too close to the curb, because if I'm too close to the curb, then I'm gonna find myself struggling on the actual reverse bit and in the mirror, it's gonna look something like that. When you pull up on the left-hand side, you wanna be about a drain's width from the curb. A drain's width from the curb is about that much, so the width of a drain. And the reason why you wanna be a drain's width is that you don't wanna to be too close to it, otherwise you're likely to hit it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reverse back to the point that you need for the point of turn. So just like all reversing maneuvers, I'm gonna be looking all the way around the car. I'm gonna also start off by looking a little bit towards that rear window. I'm gonna reverse back to the point that you need for the point of turn. In your mirror, it's going to look something like that. And through the rear window, if you look at the curb that's moving away, you're going to see some sort of reference point. Now, reference points change depending on where you sit. It could be about halfway down the door here, but definitely somewhere between that zone. And then I'm going to lock the wheel to the left. Another great tip is to get some blind spot mirrors. They're really good at being able to see the curb when doing any kind of reversing. And that's going to take me around the bend. And if I've done it really well, I'll be very, very tight to the curb. And it's at this point here that you need to straighten the steering wheel in line with the curb. And you know you're straight with the curb if the line of your car and the curb is parallel. If I want to fit closer to the curb, this is where it's going to help me with the parallel park. So what I'm gonna do is with my steering wheel is I'm gonna turn my steering wheel one quarter turn to the left like so. Now if I turn the wheels to the left, that means the back of the car is going to go left and the front is gonna to move to the right. So the back of the car is now moving towards the curb. When I'm happy with that by looking in the mirror, I'm then gonna half turn it to the right so now the wheels are facing that way, so the nose is gonna be coming in to the left and the back is gonna be moving away from the curb. So I've turned right, the back will go right. And then when I'm parallel and straight, I straighten up the wheels. Now I'm about to explain this on the move, but just to show you, when the steering is straight, we can call this 12 o'clock. When the steering is turned to the right, we can call that three o'clock. 
and when the steering is turned to the left, we can call that nine o'clock. Just imagine the steering wheel is a clock. Reversing into the road, which is about straight, I'm gonna to go to nine o'clock on the steering wheel. That's gonna bring the back of the car towards the curb. When I'm happy with that, I'm gonna to go to three o'clock on the steering wheel. That's gonna bring the nose of the car in. And then when I'm pretty much nice and straight, I'm gonna straighten the wheels back up to 12 o'clock. So again, I'm gonna turn the steering wheel to nine o'clock. That's gonna bring the back of the car again to the left. And then I'm gonna bring that in a little bit further. And then three o'clock, and then 12 o'clock. And this is actually called, what I call, the rule of three. When I'm trying to do some form of a correction, it generally comes in threes. Not always, there's a little bit of gray area on that. That rule of three is so fundamental when it comes to correcting the bay park, correcting within the parallel park, that if you can practice that doing the reverse around the corner, how much more is that gonna give you an understanding of reversing if you practice this first before you then go into the bay park or the parallel park? If nothing else from this video, you're gonna get that rule of three. Now, if you do end up steering quite late as you come around the corner, you might need to do a bit more than just nine, three, 12, but it gives you that gradual reverse into the road. If you have any questions, then obviously hit me up in the comments because I'd love to hear from you. If you get any value from the video, obviously hit the like button, subscribe if you like more content, and I will see you in the next one. Get one out.